Hi, you guys. Happy back to school season, I guess. It's not for me and I'm kind of jealous of everyone who's going back to school because I miss it so much. But um, I hope that you're enjoying. Um, enjoy it while you can. I want to go back to school so badly. But anyways, I'm a big girl now and I have a job, so I have to work at that. And it's, it's a great job. I shouldn't I shouldn't say that. Um, great people, a great job. Um, but it would be nice to go back to school. So maybe one day. But um, back to what I'm making this video about, uh, it's going to be problem 6.82 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. Let's get started. So this is part two of the last problem that I uploaded. Consider the system shown in the image. The rope and pulley have negligible mass and the pulley is frictionless. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the 8.00 block, uh, the 8.00 kilogram block in the tabletop is um, mu k is equal to 2 point, 0 0.250. The blocks are released from rest. Use energy methods to calculate the speed of the 6.00 kilogram block after it has descended 1.50 meters. Okay. So very similar to the last problem, but just a little bit of an extension. So let's talk about it. We have this setup. Um, okay, yeah. So we have this setup right over here, right? And what is happening is that we have this, let's call this mass one. This is an eight 0.00 kilo kilogram block. And then we have mass two, right? This is a 6.00 kilogram block. And this rope and pulley have like negligible mass. So we don't really think about those two. But the blocks are released from rest. So we're initially, you know, we initially have this like V1 of like zero, right? And we want to use energy methods to calculate the speed of the 6.00 kilogram block after it has descended 1.5 meters. So it's at rest, then we want it to descend 1.5 meters, and then we're gonna find out what is V2, right? So that is a little explanation of this system, right? And it's really great that we have a diagram, but all right. So let's write down all of our knowns first. And our knowns are, so let's do that in dark green right over here. So knowns. And our knowns are, well, we have M1 is equal to 8.00 kilograms. Then we have M2, my handwriting is atrocious just because I haven't held a pen in so long. 6.00 kilogram, 6.00 kilograms. Okay, and we know that initially our speed is zero meters per second, right? For both, right? For zero point, it's gonna be 0, 0.0 meters per second for M1 and M2 just because we're starting at rest. And then what? Uh, oh, we have mu k, right? So our coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.250, right? And we don't have units for that. And yeah, we know that the um, distance this uh, block travels, right, is 1.50 meters. All right, so... What does it mean to use energy methods to solve this problem? So it's gonna be um, the same as the last problem, right? So we're gonna be using this equation. We're gonna be using um, total work is equal to um, the change in kinetic energy, right? And so if you want an explanation on this equation a little bit more, I talk about that in the last video, so go check that out. But I'm just going to be going into the problem so let's just break down what every single one of these terms means for this problem. Okay, so let's start off with something easy. So the initial kinetic energy of the system. We know that the initial kinetic energy of the system is zero. How do we know that? Because the blocks are starting from rest, right? So what is the um, equation? for kinetic energy. It's going to be half of mv squared, right? So we have mass, right? We have our mass is gonna be eight and six, right? 
but our V is zero. So because V is zero, because we're starting from rest, then this just becomes zero. So we know that K1 is zero. Okay, so we know that the initial kinetic energy is zero, but what about the kinetic energy at the end, right? So at the end, once we um, once it has descended 1.50, we wanna know what the speed is. So yeah, let's talk about that. That's going to be half of m1 v squared, right? So the kinetic energy of the first block plus the, I actually shouldn't write that to confuse you guys because actually, uh, probably should have used planned out better notation, but yeah. So the speed of M1, so I'm gonna write just one here so that you know that I'm talking about the speed of um, the mass one, right? And then half of M2, V2 squared, right? So we wanna know the, by the way, this is not, this. I should, maybe this is V naught, let's call that V naught, right? Okay, just for initial. Okay, so K2 is equal to half of M1, V1 squared plus half of M2, V2 squared, right? So we just wanna know the final speed, right? Of the first mass and the final speed of the second mass. And once we do that, we plug those in because we have M1, we have M2, and then we can get K2. All right, good. But we can actually simplify this a little bit further. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's moving as a system, right? If you have a rope connecting two blocks of mass together and one block is moving, assuming that the rope is taut, that means that they're both moving together, right? So if this is moving, like think about it, it's impossible. If this one's moving at like eight meters per second, then there's no way that this is moving at like 20 meters per second, right? It has to be the same because they're connected by this rope and pulley. So that means that over here, V1F is equal to V2F because they're part of a system, right? So that means we can actually go ahead and collect like terms. So half of Vf, because they both have the same final speed, both masses have the same final speed, um, Vf squared, and then m1 plus m2. And all I did really to go from this line to this line is just collect like terms, right? So this makes sense. This is what K2 is. And I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that. Let's highlight that in... Uh, baby blue. That's not. Mm, okay, let's make that a little bit thicker. I don't like that. Okay, let's just do. Okay, yeah, I like that. Okay, so there we go. That is what K2 is. Okay, so now let's talk about this term right over here. So WT, WT, total work. What is the total work on this system? So what is the work being done on this system? Well, two things. There is work done, work being done by the force of friction, right? And then there's work being done by gravity. So we have two components to this. We have work due to force of kinetic friction and work being done due to gravity. Okay, so let's break these terms down a little bit further. So what is the work being done by gravity? I mean, sorry, by force of friction. So let's do this term first, okay? And the work being done by force of friction, well, we can write it down as force of kinetic friction, and then like the dot product D, which is like the distance it travels, right? So this is just um, like the equation for work, right? And we can do the same thing here. We can say force due to gravity, um, and then um, the same thing, like the distance that work, that the distance that force is done. Yeah. Okay. So 
what is the force of friction? Well, it's going to be mu times Fn, which is the normal force. Normal force of what, you may ask? It's going to be the normal force of um, M1, because M1 is what's in contact and what's going to be experiencing friction. M2 can't experience friction because it's just in the air. It's not rubbing against, rubbing against the tabletop, so it can't experience friction. So you have mu, mu k, and Fn is 9.8 times M1, right? Because Fn is just, um, in this situation, because uh, it's just sitting flat on the table, uh, Fn is just equal to um, Fg, right? So it's just, this is Fg, this is Fn, it's just balancing out, and Fn is perpendicular to the um, surface of contact, right? Awesome. Okay, so we have that here. So mu k times um, gravity times m1, and then dot product with d, right, which is 1.5 millimeters, because if this is descending 1.5 millimeters, then this means that this block is moving 1.5 mil 1.5 meters this way. 1.5 meters down for m2 means 1.5 meters right for m1, right? And uh, for dot product, well, I want you to recognize something. So this is the equation for work, right? Now, I want you to think about which direction this force is. Force is actually in, the force of friction is kind of working against the direction of travel, right? So force of friction is this way, right? And, but the box is traveling this way. So this dot product, um, it means cos theta of these two of force, the direction of force and the direction of like travel, right? The distance or the displacement, right? And because this is a 100, this is cos 180, that means that cos 180 is equal to minus one, which means that force is going to be, the work done by friction is like, is, is negative, right? That makes sense because friction is slowing us down. It's kind of taking away from our, um, from our system, right? So it's going to be minus mu k times 9.8 times m1 times 1.5. All right, so now let's go back to this line again and do the same thing for um, F, uh, uh, for work done by gravity. So a work done by gravity, it's force of gravity, right? Which is just mg, but this, is, this time it's gonna be m2g, right? Because this is the item that's like moving downwards, right? This one's not moving down, this one's on the table. That's why it's like, it's moving right, it's not moving down. Right, so this is going to be m g and then d one point five. So now you might ask, what is the um? Let's think about this. F g force of gravity is going to be downwards, and the distance it's traveling or displacement it's traveling is also downwards. So cos of zero is equal to one. So that means that we're just adding m g d m two g d. So m two times nine point eight times distance, which is 1.5. And we are just gonna plug in our values. So minus 0 0.25 times 9.8 times eight times 1.5 plus 6.0 times 9.8 times 1.5. And we're gonna plug that into our calculators. Um, I still don't have a real calculator. Forgot to bring it from my parents' house. I see it every single time on my desk back, like back home, but I'm always like, nah, why do I need a calculator? I can just use one at work. 
Um, but then I always forget that I need it for like these videos. But okay. So plugging it in. Okay, so it's gonna be minus 29.4 plus. So that's this term, right? And then I'm now I'm gonna plug in this term. is 88.2 okay and altogether this is 58.8 joules right so we have our wt and we have our k2 minus k1 right here and what the question is asking us is to calculate the speed, right? And we established the speed of the six kilogram block is also the speed of the M2 block, right? And so we're just gonna equate these together, right? And then we're gonna isolate for VF. So let's do that right over here. And I'm just gonna grab an eraser. Okay, let's do it in pink. Okay, so like we said, WT is equal to K2 minus K1. And we established that WT is going to be 58.8, right? And K2 minus K1 is half of M1 plus M2, and that is 14. And then multiplied by BF squared. And let's isolate for VF. So 58.8 times 2 divided by 14. And then square root that is equal to VF. And the speed is 2.90 meters per second. That's what I'm getting for VF. So the final speed, the, the speed of the 6.0 kilogram block after it has descended 1.50 meters is 2.90 meters per second. Hope that's helpful. And as per usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or shoot me an email. Um, otherwise, please, 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 if this was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, send to your classmates, send to your friends, um, anyone who would watch this, send it to them. Um, if I haven't said this already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much and see you next time.